a place where I love to be. Look in a book, here's a story for you. Who makes stories when the day is through? Who makes stories when the day is through? Story makers, story makers, working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers, stories are fabulous, stories are fun. Milton Wordsworth. Working through the night till the rising sun Story makers, story makers Stories are fabulous, stories are fun Come and be a story maker Story makers Hello. Has everybody gone? The sun is down, the stars are bright. Story makers come out at night. Milton Wordsworth, story maker and magical maestro, at your service. Whew. Oh, there you both are. Are you ready to make some stories? Whew, it's mighty hot. Oh, yes, it is hot. I couldn't sleep last night. Oh, Milton, I'm hot too. Mm. Jelly, what are you doing? I'm fanning my teddy. He's too hot with all his fur. Oh, you need one of these. I watched the children make it earlier. What is it? It's a fan oh. made out of paper. Oh. See? Ah, oh, it feels better already. <laughs> How did they make it? Oh, like this. There's lots of folding. One, and, uh, like, two, just like Milton's and doing. And, <laughs> and, and, then, and then you open it out like a feather. <laughs> oh, Milton, you're so clever. <laughs> uh, and so are the children. Look, they even drew these pretty oh, pictures. Oh, yes. Mm. Um, this one looks like a picnic. Yes. Teddy bears picnic. Mm. Oh, mm. I wonder what teddy bears like to eat. Oh, yes. <laughs> Picture in. And do you know what else the machine needs to get it going? Imagination. That's right. Imagine. Imagine. Imagine a story. And it's called Pernia's Party. <laughs> My teddy will love this. It was a very special day for Pernia. She was really excited because she had invited her friends over for a teddy bear's picnic. All her friends were going to come to her house with their teddy bears. Pernia's favourite teddy was called Chloe. Chloe was thrilled too as she would get to see all her teddy bear friends. When Pernia's friends started to arrive, Chloe's friends started to arrive too. Everybody was so excited, especially the teddies, who didn't get out much. They all went into the garden and started playing. Some of the teddies sat and had a good old chat. Mummy had made lots of really nice food for everyone to eat. There were cakes, jam tarts and lots of crisps. There was also bread and sticky honey, which is a teddy bear's favourite thing. Chloe and the teddies piled their plates full of food. Teddies, as you probably know, can be rather greedy especially when there is bread and sticky honey to eat. Pernia had invited someone very special to the picnic. It was her Auntie Jo. She lived far away in America and had come to visit. Auntie Jo had brought a very special friend of her own to show everyone. It was her teddy from America called Brad. Brad had a jumper with an American flag on it. Brad looked like he was hungry, so Pernia took him over to meet Chloe and the other teddies. Chloe was worried because they didn't have any special American food for Brad. They only had bread and sticky honey. That's cool, said Brad. I love bread and sticky honey. 
Teddies everywhere love bread and sticky honey. So Brad tucked in with all the other teddies. Pernia and her friends had some more food to eat and played in the garden. It was a wonderful teddy bear's picnic. Nine green bottles hanging on the wall. Nine green bottles hanging on the wall. Oh, hello, Jackson. One green bottle should accidentally Newton. fall. There'll be eight green Newton. bottles hanging on the wall. Newton! Eight Newton! Green... Oh, what? <laughs> Could I have a look at that guitar a minute, please? All right. Thank you. Hey, Jackson! Jackson, now I'm hot and bored. Well, trust me, Milton, you know it makes sense. Uh, and you won't be bored for long. Are you ready? Imagine, 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 imagine a story. It's a Jack Spratt and Trickle Cat story. Oh, yes. Summer in the city. Sounds hot. Jack Spratt and Treacle Cat lived in a bin. A bin that people drop rubbish in. While Treacle dreams, Jack Spratt schemes. What will Jack Spratt make today? Ah, oh, this is the life. Summer in the city. Ah, oh, nice bit of sunbathing. Ah, oh, yeah. I can feel the rays on me fur. Mm. Here, Treacle. Get up there for a spot of sunshine. Uh, 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 oh. <laughs> I don't mind if I do, Jack. I could just do with a, a catnap. Oh, What's that noise? Uh, oh, you pesky parasite. Buzz off, you wretched wasp. Treacle, mind uh, out, mate, or you'll get sting in your tail. What, what, a wasp, a wasp? Oh, quick, Jack, watch out for the dive bomber. Take shelter, run for cover. <laughs> Chucks away, oh... Yeah, take it easy. That's the trouble with living in our humble abode. <sighs> Those pesky wasps are always nosing around in the summer, aren't they? Yes, uh, yes. I don't know what they think we've got in here. Jam sandwiches. Oh, dear. I can feel my fur getting frazzled. Oh, someone's coming. Heads up. <laughs> don't you worry, Treacle. I've got just the answer. See this? Well, I don't see how that load of old rubbish is going to calm my nerves. Calm your nerves? By the time I've finished with these, mate, <laughs> you'll be in pussy paradise. Oh, really? What are you planning to make, you mad ratter? Music, mate. That's what I'm going to make. Music! Ah, oh, music maestro. <laughs> it takes me back to the time when I was in the cat's chorus at Covent Garden. What were you then? Phantom of the Opera? <laughs> oh, you scallywag. You know nothing. I was the purring Pavarotti of my day. <laughs> Just one sardine sunny, give it to me. Delicious fresh fish from the deep blue sea. And hey, was... stop that caterwauling and come up here. Oh, what a <laughs> racket. Do you call that music? <sighs> Listen to this, mate. Oh, yeah, I'm a rocking rat, and this is where it's at. I'm a rocking rat, and this is where it's at. I'm a rocking rat, and this is where it's at. I'm a rocking rat, I'm a rocking rat, and this is where it's at. I'm a rocking rat, and this is where it's at. Oh, cheesy niblets, me whiskers treacle. Oh, me yeah. snout's all snagged up. Help me out, mate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, one good thing. It's put a stop to that rodent and his racket. <laughs> yes, it's what I call another perfect ending. <laughs> oh. I wonder where the hottest place in the world is. I know. It's the dessert. Is that dessert as in a very hot apple crumble, or perhaps you mean desert, as in a place with lots of sand? <gasps> oh, yes, um, desert, where camels live. I always get that one muddled up. Oh, mm. deserts. Very, very, very hot. Mm. Often they are. Hot and dusty with no water for miles and miles and miles. Ooh, I wonder what it's like to live there. Ah, mm. Maybe we could find out by putting this picture into the machine. Mm. Oh, that's a good idea. What a lovely picture. Mm. 
Are you ready to join in with the magic words? Imagine, imagine, imagine a story. It's a blue cow story. Blue cow in the desert. In a field not far away is a herd of cows grazing quietly. One of the cows is most unusual. Blue cow wonders, wonders about the big world beyond her field. One day, Blue cow was watching the rain clouds gathering in the sky. I wonder what it would be like to be in a place where it didn't rain. She's off again, said all the other cows. So Blue Cow caught the bus that stops beside her field. I'd like a return ticket to a place where it doesn't rain, please. There you go, madam. Hold very tight. And they set off for the desert. And then they arrived. When Blue Cow got off the bus, she could hardly believe her eyes. She saw miles and miles of yellow golden sand. The sun was shining and it was very, very hot. In the distance, Blue Cow could see some palm trees. Oh, it's so hot, I'd better get into the shade, thought Blue Cow. And she started to walk towards the trees. She walked and walked and walked. But the trees didn't seem to be getting any closer. Hello, I'm Noel, the camel, said a voice. Are you all right? Blue Cow looked up and saw a large creature with two humps on its back. Hello, I'm Blue Cow. I'm trying to get to the shade, but I'm very hot and tired. Let me help you. I'm used to walking in this heat, said Noel. Climb on my back. Noel knelt down and Blue Cow sat in between his humps. Hold on tight said Noel, and off they went. Up and down bounced Blue Cow, boing, 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 as Noel trotted across the desert. They arrived at an oasis. There were camels everywhere, in the swimming pool, lying in hammocks underneath palm trees, and playing mixed doubles with vultures on the tennis court. Welcome to my oasis, said Noel, kneeling down so that Blue Cow could get off. This is a desert holiday camp. Blue Cow was so happy to see the water that she jumped into the pool. Splash! Oh, that's better, she said. I've enjoyed being in the desert, but I think I prefer being in a place where it's not so hot. You'll never guess where I've been. Where have you been? I met Noel in an oasis in the desert. Everyone knows cows can't go to the desert. But we know they can, don't we? Oh. I'm glad we're not in the desert. Mm. It looks too hot there. <laughs> but here comes the daylight. Ooh. And it looks like another hot day. Ooh, mm. But not as hot as the desert. <laughs> yeah. The dawn is upon us. The morning is nigh. We've made our stories and we bid you goodbye. Bye, story makers. Mm. See you again soon.